From Nature Conservancy headquarters, welcome to Global Insights. My name is Matt Perry. Today we're talking about something we all have a relationship with, food. And what a better food system can mean for both people and our planet. Here to talk about this with me today is the head of TNC's Center for Sustainability Science, Jen Molnar. Jen, it's great to have you today. Thanks. I'm gonna kick off the first question with a couple of stats. It's projected that um, in just the next 30 years, global food demand is going to increase by 50%. And meanwhile, already today, agriculture and ranching account for 40% of land use and a whopping 70% of the world's freshwater supply. So my first question, Jen, despite the challenges, can we be optimistic about the future of food? Yes, I think we can. I think you laid out a lot of really big challenges. What gives me a little bit of hope is the fact that they're really shared challenges. It's not just you know the Nature Conservancy or someone else trying to figure it all out. And farmers are out there trying to make a living and grow more food, but they're also dealing with challenges like climate change. That's shifting weather patterns, shifting seasonal timing. Um, you have customers, like you said, they're looking for more sustainable options. They want to know where their food comes from, how is it grown, how can they get better food. And companies are looking at how do they meet that demand, how do, they, how do we supply better food, and then also how do they deal with sustainability issues in their own supply chains. Um, climate change hits them too. So as we at the Nature Conservancy are looking at how do we create this world where people and nature thrive together, sustainably feeding ourselves is actually a big part of that. So I think there's a lot of chance to bring together a lot of different actors across the food sector and look at new innovations for finding that better future. You know, let's talk a little bit more about the private sector. Uh, there are any number of ranchers and farmers, countless ranchers and farmers around the world, and yet a relatively smaller number of truly global companies moving key parts of the food sector forward. Tell me a little bit more about the progress you're seeing at that scale. Yeah, no, I think there's some big opportunities for us to have significant impact by working with some of these companies that, like you said, really have an outsized role within the food system whether they're agricultural input companies, so supplying seeds and fertilizer, other chemicals, or on the retail side and really getting that food from those farms and ranches into our grocery stores. Um, so one example, just to give you a sense of what this could look like, we have a long history in the conservancy of working on the ground with farmers and ranchers. And um, we've brought our science to bear, our real practical experience on how do you actually grow food more sustainably? How do we improve practices on the ground? So Walmart came to us and asked us, how can they buy more sustainable beef that's more sustainable? And you know, what, what does that look like at the scale that Walmart can sell beef at? So by working with them, we're able to touch many more ranches than we could one-on-one -on -one working um, in our, through our conservation programs. But we can bring the real practical knowledge of our North America team of you know, working with those ranchers on the ground bring our science to figure out how do we really scale that up so a company like Walmart can do it. Um, but I think it's a really exciting chance for us to see how we can, how we can be part of that solution and providing more sustainable food. Are you seeing other companies starting to look at Walmart or, or, or kind of replicate what Walmart is thinking about? Yeah, and I think Walmart's just one of many companies are looking at these issues. I think the last few years, it's been really great to see companies stepping outside of just needing to look at short-term bottom line issues and really think more broadly about the role that they play in the world. And the public is really pressuring them into that in some cases, but sometimes they're just realizing it's, it benefits themselves to be thinking about issues like climate change. So we see companies making commitments around the Paris Agreement for climate action. Uh, a lot of companies are aligning their goals around the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So seeing their business goals not just as how do they you know, meet the bottom line in the short term, but how can they really be a force for good in society and help solve the challenges that we're all dealing with together? You know, in, in, in you mentioned the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Obviously, that'll come require a lot of capital um, to, to achieve those goals. And it, it reminds me, that I think the global food system is estimated to be a $3 trillion uh, industry. What is the role that financial incentives might, might play in, in increasing the, or speeding up the move to more sustainable practices? Yeah, I think it plays a big role. I think, you know, a, if we're really looking to produce more sustainable food, a lot of that burden can fall on the farmers and ranchers themselves. As they look to shift to more sustainable practices, it can, partly it's just changing momentum of from doing what they've always done to something new, but sometimes it requires more expensive equipment. There's upfront costs that in the long term might benefit them, but they may not have the resources or the incentive to make that shift. So if we can bring funding to help that, it can really benefit all of us, as well as help them maintain their living. So 
Um, at the same time, companies and lenders, investors, insurers are looking at how can they make investments where they're also getting a social benefit, where they're also seeing environmental impact. Um, so we were able to bring these together in a great example recently where we worked with the major food company, Bungie, and also the bank, Santander Brazil, to set up uh, long-term loans at the scale of $50 million for soy farmers in Brazil. We're basically incentivizing those farmers to grow their soy on degraded lands instead of growing it in areas where they need to cut down forest. So we're creating this great incentive for them to do what's better for the environment. It allows them to have, you know, have their own sustainable living, um, but also supply us with better food. You know, you mentioned earlier uh, the role that consumers have in, in this equation. And obviously food is such a central part of all of our lives. What would you say about the, you know, the role of consumers here? Yeah, and food is something I think we're all passionate about, uh, whether it's something that you love to eat because it tastes really good, whether it's cultural. A lot of people bring values to what they eat, whether it's social or environmental. Uh, obviously, cost plays a role. But um, I think increasingly, people are really expecting their food to be sustainably sourced or sustainably grown. Um, and that is really, I think, as consumers ask for that more, it's driving more change within companies that are producing that food and the General Mills and Kellogg's and other companies as well as those retailers to really help supply that, those sustainable options. So I think consumers have a really important role to play in asking for more sustainable food and then expecting to see that on the shelves. Jen, I'll get you out on this question. What is one of your favorite sustainable <laughs> foods today? So I hate to step away from land-based agriculture, but um, I lived for a number of years in Seattle, and I have to say I have a, a weak spot for uh, wild-caught sockeye salmon. Well, it's hard, to, it's hard to beat all the healthy omega-3 fats you get from the wild-caught sockeye. Uh, can't argue that choice. Jen, thanks for being here today. Thank you.